All right, next up, Gregory is saying, have you ever studied the Moore's Law in your business study case uh, or uh, provision case? Yeah, yeah, and, and I've actually got a, a case study on it, um, but I've got a, I, I gotta show you something. Give me one second um, when it comes to Gordon Moore, and he was the, the co-founder of Intel along with the, the late, great Andy Grove. But give me one second, I wanna show you something. So this here, that's Gordon Moore. And, and there's Eugene Kleiner uh, as well from Kleiner Perkins, the great venture capital firm. So these eight people, they're called the Traders Eight. And what they did was they worked for some guy who's tough, was tough to work for. That, there's a big filter going on here. His name was William Shockley at a semiconductor company and he treated them so poorly. And so these eight people worked for William Shockley and it was like a cabal. They said, enough is enough. You know, and, and, and they were so frustrated. And frustration is a beautiful thing in business because it forces you to get outside your comfort zone and reinvent yourself. And that's what these eight people did. They reinvented themselves and they reinvented the world. It's true. What they did was they left Shockley and they started their own company called Fairchild Semiconductor. And what Fairchild Semiconductor did was uh, in 1960, Americans were broken hearted because uh, what happened was uh, the Soviets, uh, Russia, beat, uh, beat the United States to the moon or to, to space. Uh, and so Americans were brokenhearted. And so Kennedy said, screw this, man. And he was a great president because he created the Peace Corps. No one gives him credit for that. He's awesome. But Kennedy said, OK, let's let's create something called NASA. And the goal of NASA is going to be to put a person on the moon before the Russians do. And in order to put a person on the moon, what had to happen was that you had to be able to fit 100,000 little transistors into the top part of a rocket called the fuselage. And there was no technology out there to do that. And so what happened was the first notable venture capital deal was done in Fairchild Sem Semiconductor. Okay, And what they did was they, they figured out how to do it. And as a result, by 1969, um, if you believe they put a man on the moon, I've got the REM song in my head now. Great song. Uh, but uh, they, they actually ended up um, doing it. Uh, but then what happened was, with, like with all great companies, this company, Fairchild, got too big and got bureaucratic. Uh, and as a result, you know, people left. And the companies that came out of this were called Fairchildren. Like, uh, like Intel, Gord Moore. NVIDIA, the great graphics company too, ticker NVDA. AMD as well, another great chip company, which is finally giving Intel a run for its money. Um, and then what happened was, that semiconductor industry did well and flourished in the Bay Area. And then people left those semiconductor companies to start computer companies, PCs. And then people left those PC companies to start software companies. And then people left those software companies to start internet companies, rinse, lather, repeat. Uh, and so that's, that's one of the reasons why uh, Silicon Valley is so successful. It's because of these, these heroes of mine, the, 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 the traitorous eight. But that's Gordon Moore there. And, and you're asking about here in your question about Moore's Law. So Moore's Law basically says that, I think it's like every year or so, or year and a half, whatever, uh, the price of processors drops by like 50%, the processing power increases a lot. Um, and so that kind of held true for a while with single processor based computers. And then it didn't really hold up as well. And so what happened was they had to put multiple processors in computers. And Gregory, yeah, I, I do have a case study also, not just the Moore's Law, whatever, but also, um, so Intel back in 1995, they, they released a, a Pentium processor that had a flaw in it. So if you did very complex, massive calculations, it might be 0.0001% off. But what happened was absolutely brilliant uh, disaster control. Uh, so to speak, um, and PR from Andy Grove. What Andy Grove did, the, the, the late great CEO of, of Intel, and one of my favorite business books, you got to read it. It's called Only the Paranoid Survive by Andy Grove. But what Andy Grove did was he owned up to it right away. And he went on CNBC, uh, Bloomberg TV, whatever, all, all the news stations all over the world in 1995 and said, here's the issue. We're sorry about it. We're going to give every customer a refund that requests it. And what happened was this, not only did that transparency build an incredible amount of trust with customers and investors, but something more important happened as a byproduct of him being honest and doing that, these, these interviews. A lot of people never heard of Intel back in 1995. And all of a sudden you've got this ethical guy on TV talking about an issue they had with Intel. 
and it was free PR. It was bring. It was it was brilliant or, or brilliant, brilliant Angie at the same time. I don't know if that's a word. Um, it, and then uh, what happened was everybody knew I was inside a computer, Intel. So anyway, really really smart uh, uh, on, on Andy Grove's part. Yeah. <laughs>